In this video, I want to talk about how you develop a niche finders mindset or a niche finders mindset, depending on how you care to pronounce it. And in doing so, you need to look at the world slightly differently. You need to develop a sort of an outside of the box way of thinking. Now, there are practically an unlimited number of niches out there. You've got business related niches, hobby niches, personal development niches, you know, the list just goes on and on. And sometimes the most profitable niches can actually be the most unglamorous ones. Why? Because not many other people are marketing to them. So that leaves the field wide open for you. Now, think about it this way. Any problem or need is a niche. Any hobby or interest is a niche. Anything that can make people's lives easier, happier or more fulfilled is a niche. So to put it simply, what you have to do is find a void and fill it. And that's actually easier than you think. When it comes to problems that people face, either in their personal life or in their business life, when it comes to things to do with hobbies or pastimes, sometimes people can be so close to the problem that they literally can't see the forest for the trees. They really can't. They're so focused on the problem that they do not see the bigger picture. Now, that gives you an advantage because you can see things from a distance because you're not so close to the problem. You can look at the problem from a different angle from the one that they're looking it at. You can look at the problem from a greater distance than they're looking at. And you might see the answer looking, you know, staring them straight in the face, but they can't see it, but you can. And that's where you have the advantage. Now, how do you do that? Well, quite simply, you have to look at the world through the eyes of a problem solver. If, like me, you're a fan of the Sherlock Holmes stories by Arthur Conan Doyle, you'll know that Holmes lets the facts lead him to the conclusion, and he will look at something objectively, and he will deduce what happened or who's done something from what he sees. Well, the thing is, you need to apply the same principles to niche research as Sherlock Holmes does to finding an answer. And if you do that, well, quite simply, you can't go wrong because you're going to find the answers and the answers are in the niches. And once you have the answer, you have the niche. And if it's not a particularly glamorous niche, if it's something that's a rather unglamorous problem that needs to be solved, not a lot of other people are going to be going after it, and that gives you the advantage.